this is Fountain Pendulum. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some beautiful autumn colored inks. Um, I was going to just do six for this, but honestly, I just got too excited. So we have plenty. And what I've done is I've categorized them by um, tones and undertones. So first we have a pile with browns and then browns with a reddish undertone, browns with orange undertones, browns with yellow undertones, and then I have brownish greens, um, a more saturated but dark green, and then I've got some vibrant oranges that we're going to talk about also. And we're also going to do one swatch together. I, um, it'll be when we get to this section. So why don't we just go ahead and start this off. And we're going to start off with the browns. All right, so let's go darkest to lightest. So here are three recommendations that I have. Um, Kyo no Oto, number 10. Ochi Yororo, um, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. I did my best. And I love the saturation of this color. And it's kind of almost a little glossy. Doesn't really have a sheen. Uh, kind of satiny, glossy. So I really like that one. Diamine Triple Chocolate. Yes, please. What I like about this color... I think is it's quite neutral, but it's if you look at the writing sample especially, it's a nice way to get brown while still noticing that it's brown. It's not so dark and so saturated that it just simply looks black. So I like that because it comes out as like a true brown when you're writing, even with a fine nib. All right, then a little bit lighter. This is very lovely. This is uh, new to me. This is the Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour. And this is a nice kind of rich, sandy brown. So it's definitely on the lighter side, but with a nice wet writer, even with a fine uh, nib, it gives you a, a beautiful brown color. So quite fond of that. So that's what I have for neutral browns. Let's move on to those that have a reddish undertone. So I have here Dye My Nutcracker. And I know this is very holiday-esque and it has a green sheen to it, but I couldn't help myself. It's a great brown for this autumn season. So it stays. Okay, this has an even darker red hue to it. Uh, I think this is actually J. Herbon, Caribbean de Cypre. Uh, slight green sheen on that one as well. And this is like red orange, and I'd say this is more red. So really like that one. Nicely saturated on that as well. Okay, again, Roasted Chestnut. This is definitely a holiday-esque color, but still, I think it goes really well for the season. Uh, very maple leaf colored to me, too. So I really like that. Damine Roasted Chestnut. Okay, here's the one we're going to re-swatch together. Ferris Wheel Press Steeped Umber. So this is beautiful. Um, very rich, very saturated, uh, reddish brown. And the reason I want to re-swatch it is because I did this in an unconventional way with my Kakamori nib. I tried to do everything with the Kakamori nib and it worked, but I'm missing out on some of the uh, gradient values, meaning like 
saturated and highly saturated area. So we're going to redo that one together. And then Ferris wheel press candy Marsala. I love this color. It's moderately saturated, I would say, and it has a bit of sheen, but not a very dis like a distinct color to that sheen. Maybe green, not really sure. So really like that one. So let's go ahead and re-swatch the steeped umber together. All right, so I have my color ring paper. I prefer using the smooth side to the more textured. So I have that stamped. And I have my Ferris wheel press ink charger with steeped umber. And I'm gonna put that in my ink vial stabilizer. That way, hopefully no incidents occur. And I have my Kakamari nib. I have the steel one, stainless steel. And of course, I've got a bit of water to rinse it out with. So I usually begin by dipping my Kakamori nib, and if I'm not doing an ink dump or a big area, then I, if I'm starting out with writing, I just do a partial dip, just to get some ink on the tip there, and I usually will point it up to let the ink distribute a little bit more. So here we go, and I hold this up rather vertically so that the font would be finer. All right. So next I'll go ahead and do a full dip or as full as I can do. There we go. And then I'll usually pick this card up and do the color right across it. I'm actually going to switch over and do it with my brush because I feel like it gives it just more gradation. See the difference? I like that better. There we go. Okay, so now um, I use a very fine eyedropper and I aim to get precisely one drop of ink right dead center, one Put the remnant back and then I use my little stone to distribute this ink in the circular area. There we go. So already, even though things are not dry yet, I think you can certainly see the difference in these two swatches. And as I mentioned previously, this one I did completely using my Kakanomori nib. So I did this back and forth. I did the perimeter. I did the circular uh, motion with the belly of the Kakanomori nib. And it works really well for a one tool. Um, you know, application. It's very minimalistic. 
But the challenge I find is that I really love seeing the low and high saturated values of the ink. I'm just not getting that with the Kakamori nib. So that is basically why I chose to redo it together. And I'll show it to you again once everything is dry so that you can judge for yourself if that's something of value to you. But with that, we will finish this section. And move straight along to the oranges. So here I have my um, one of my favorites from the orange section. This is Dominant Industries Ginger Chicken. And this is an exclusive with Wonder Pens and Toronto. So a little bit more difficult to come by, get your hands on, but definitely attainable. And then Dye Mine Ancient Copper. We'll take a look at these all together because they are strikingly similar. Dye Mine Terracotta. And Dye Mine Cherry Sunburst. So let's take a look. So I would say that the Ginger Chicken is definitely the darkest, followed by Cherry Sunburst. And this one is also, I would say, the most saturated. I'd say the next best saturated would be the Ancient Copper, and then Cherry Sunburst, and then Terracotta. But these are pretty close. And um, this is a much lighter color in general. These really come through with more vibrancy on the orange, which I like. And this is a little bit more musky or muted. So those are my inputs on these. I would definitely say that Ancient Copper and Ginger Chicken would take the win for me personally because I like that more vibrant orange hue. But that, of course, is personal preference. Okay, next up we have the kind of mustard hues. So check this out. Another holiday-esque one, but Dime Mine Ginger Bread. I love these mustardy colors. This is more orange-yellow, I would say. And then Dime Mine Desert Burst. I really like this one a lot. That's a more true mustard, I would say. It's leaning more the yellow direction. And then Dye Mine Tobacco Sunburst. That one actually has a yellow-green undertone. So they each offer something, I think, very special in this realm. My two favorites would be the Desert Burst and the Tobacco Sunburst. Um, I'd say oof, that is a tough call between them. Maybe the tobacco sunburst, just because it's a little bit unique. I like coming across these these colors that are just variable enough, like they've got depth and complexity to them that you're just like, that's interesting, and I like it. So that is for the mustard yellows. Okay, how about some greens? Um, we have Ferris Wheel Press, Peter Moss. And I'd say this is a nice medium green that has some muddled uh, hues to it. So I like that. It's very fall, right? We're looking for those more muted tones instead of so much vibrancy. And Sailor Shikiori Takawa Matsu. This is a bit of a deeper green. And it also has a nice reddish sheen to it. So I think that's very lovely. 
And we have Krishna Shine Eye. This is a um, ink from India. And um, these have a lot of similarities to them. I would say the Krishna is a deeper green and it has a lot more sheen to it. But I would say they're cousins. Definitely like those. All right, this one is a bit of a standalone. I recently acquired this one also in my Ferris wheel press ink charger set. Actually, I would like to redo this one too because I have the same issue with the saturation and values and all that. All right, here we go for the the retake of the Spruce County post. So a little dip first. This would probably be a very interesting one also to do a um, chromatography strip on. I find that these deep, complex tones of ink usually have a very interesting story to tell when it comes to the chromatography. All right, so again, once this dries, I'll show you the side-by-side. -side. All right, and for our final category, we have some nice, vibrant oranges. All right, first off, we have Ferris Wheel Press Pumpkin Patch. And I think, out of the three, this is the most balanced for this time of year. Um, nice clean orange color, not too heavily saturated, so you can still get some nice shading. And um, just, yeah, perfect uh, amount of saturation for the particular purpose of this hue, I would say. Really like that one. The Noodler's Apache Sunset. I believe this has been renamed, but um, this is... I would say, wow, pretty close. Um, maybe a little bit more orange, just slightly, or a little bit more saturated perhaps than the pumpkin patch, but very nice. I like that. And this is a favorite too, Sailor Manyo Yamabuki. And this is definitely more of a yellow orange but i really like the shading that you accomplish with it i'd say if you're looking for more of the orange hues then using a very wet or 
broader sized nib will definitely get you there versus if you look at the word yambubuki which wasn't written with as much saturation of ink it definitely looks more yellow than orange i would say just like when you look at the color swatch the less saturated area definitely looks like a yellow the higher saturation looks more like an orange so that is the overview for those and let's take a look now at these uh swatches of the steeped umber that have dried so i think you can pretty clearly hear see what i mean about the different values and saturation and areas so which swatch looks to you more complex interesting or insightful for me it would be this one because i can see the low saturation and the high saturation of the areas and that's the characteristics of the ink that you're kind of wanting to know this is merely showing you what sat what a high saturation area would look like so if you have a very broad very wet writer you're going to be looking at these hues but if you have a finer um nib or um one that's not so generous on ink flow you're definitely going to be picking up these tones more so that's what i aim to accomplish in my ink swatches and i think that's why the system that i'm using works the best for myself um, so that's something to think about when you're doing your ink swatches as well have a whole video on that if you're interested in checking that out. All right, I decided while I was at it, I would redo this uh, oyster hour as well. So go ahead and do that. Ferris wheel press. Hour. I'm really liking this uh, stainless steel Kakamori dip nib. Um, it's a fairly recent acquisition for me, and I'm actually really liking it. I love dip nibs, but they are kind of a nuisance to have to clean because they have all these little crooks and crannies about them and um, they can rust fairly easily because they're steel and not um, stainless steel so I think that's another thing that I really like I'm curious as to whether or not I can practice and kind of accomplish a method with a kakamori nib to be able to do all these details in one but so far it looks like for what i'm trying to accomplish this is the best way to go which is use the uh, kakamori dip nib to do the brand and name of the ink and then using a small number four brush to do the perimeter and then finally going ahead and using um, the eyedropper and the stone to do the circular part So there we have it. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll show it to you when it's complete. But I was going to show you the Spruce County Post. So again, here's, you know, I think you can appreciate the ink color so much more 
when you have this um, contrast. So I'm going to show you the Oyster Hour once it's done. Okay, so here is the Oyster Hour now finished. So once again, big difference. So these are the three that I re-swatched. Steeped Umber and Spruce County Post and Oyster Hour. So these are the three that I prefer and that I'll be keeping in my ink swatch book. And that'll be that. So hopefully you saw some shades and tones that you really liked, appreciated, or would like to try uh, in your fountain pen ink journey. And let me know in the comments below what were some of your favorites and of your own inks, some that were not featured in this video. What are your favorite autumn colors? What are your favorite autumn inks? Thank you so much for watching. It's all up to you now. Ink your fountain pens with autumn colors and enjoy it.